From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Randy Singer, Johnny. How you feeling? Thanks to you and having got me here pretty good. Bellevue's a good hospital. I'll be released within the hour. So will Mike Flynn. And? I'm going down to the Glad Hand Rescue Mission to straighten out a few things with Daddy Bill. Sounds to me like it ought to be police business, Johnny. I'll be right over. No, no. Let me handle this alone. You got your gun? You bet your sweet life I have. Johnny? I'll report to you later. <laughs> Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New York City, to the Lakeside Life and Casualty Company. Following is an accounting of expenditures incurred during my investigation of the indestructible Mike matter. Item 16, 190, cab fare for Mike Flynn and myself. Bellevue Hospital to the dingy Hotel Brakeley. Both of us had our heads still swathed in bandages. With the help of the room clerk, I installed Mike in a small room on the fifth floor with instructions to keep his door locked. In my own room, room 203, I picked up my 38 and donned the old clothes I'd bought. Item 17, 55 cents, taxi to the neighborhood of the Glad Hand Rescue Mission. For obvious reasons, I walked the last couple of blocks. When I got there, the big front assembly room was empty. So was the soup kitchen in the back of the place. I called Daddy Bill's name a couple of times and got no answer. And finally decided to wait for him in the little room back of the assembly hall that he used for an office. I still felt a little shaky from the blow on the head, so I didn't mind just sitting a while. But I left the door open a crack, and a few minutes later heard the street door open. It wasn't Daddy Bill, but I recognized him as a newcomer to the mission whom I'd seen on my first visit. He made directly for the little office. All ready, Daddy. Uh, Why, you ain't Daddy Bill, sir. No. Do you know where he is? Out shopping. At least that's where he said he was going. Didn't I see you in here the other day? Why, yes, sir. I guess you did. Uh, my name's Emery. I just read the rods in from Ohio. <laughs> Boy, I had to. I got myself in a jam back there. That... Yeah, I guess I just got me too much muscle. <laughs> uh, but they won't catch up with me here. Daddy Bill promised me that. Say, I should have known you wasn't him in here. Oh? Sure, he said he wouldn't be back for another hour. You plan to wait for him? Sure do. He promised me a job. I wouldn't money on it. Enough money, he said, to get clear out of the country. And he'd help me do it. Doesn't it strike you funny, bud, that a guy running a place like this would help you skip the country? Man, when you're like me and you get a helping hand, you just don't ask no questions. Uh, you see Mike? Mike Flynn? Yeah, he come back? No, why? Uh, Daddy Bill left me a package for him. For him or Johnny if they come back here. Well, uh, I'm Johnny. Well, here, I'll get it. It's right outside the door here. Yes, sir. Look at you, see it. And uh, maybe you let me have some. Here, see? I'll take it. Licker, did you say? That's what he said. Let's open, huh? No, no, hands off. Well, look here, man. Old Mike always shares his stuff with Lefty Skillman. Lefty Skillman. It was Lefty who'd run us down with a truck whose body was found on the river. Lefty, one of Daddy Bill's poor unfortunates here at the mission. Things were beginning to add up, and this package left for Mike and me. Liquor, he said, but it didn't gurgle. Henry, listen to me. Sure, Johnny, but forget this package. I'm taking it with me back to the Waldorf. Waldorf? Yeah, that's right. That's where I'm staying. Don't let these clothes fool you. I thought there was something funny about you, the way you talk so fine. You a dick. Never mind. If Danny Bill wants me, that's where I'll be. Old Mikey won't find because I got him in room 203 at the Brakeley Hotel. Room 203. Forget it. He's still recovering from that accident. Shouldn't be disturbed. He's all doped up anyway. That's why I took him to the Brakeley, where nobody will find him. Yeah, room I said, forget about that room 203. If Daddy Bill wants me, tell him to call me at the Waldorf. <laughs> Item 18, 10 cents. Phone call from a booth in the street to Sergeant Randy Singer. Item 19, five bucks even for a fast but gentle taxi ride to the 18th Precinct, where Randy had promised to have the lab boys alerted for me. 
Oh, is this it, Johnny? Yeah. And handle it softly, please. Okay, okay. Are you going to stick around no, for a while? No, I'm going back to the breakley to, uh, to make sure Mike is all right. Yeah, now look here, Johnny. Call the Waldorf for me. Get me registered there. Instruct the desk that if there are any calls for me, I'm eating lunch or something. And I'll be back in my room in, say, an hour. Bye. Do it. I'll see you later. <laughs> Item 19. Taxi back to the Brakeley Hotel to the service entrance in the alley. For five bucks, the freight elevator operator swore he'd tell no one he'd see me take the back stairs to room 203. My room, not Mike's, as I told Emery at the mission. Office? Room clerk? That's right. This is Johnny Dollar in 203. Oh, yes. Are you still working on Now, listen, case? listen carefully. If the police call me, put them through. Very well. But to anyone else who calls or comes looking for me, I'm not here. I never was here. You never heard of me, understand? Oh, yes, indeed, Mr. Dollar. We've worked with police and private investigators before. Okay, but if anybody wants to know about Mike Flynn, I want... Flynn? Yeah, the old bum I had you put in the room up on the fifth floor. Oh, yes. If anybody course. asks for him, tell him he's in this room, 203. Oh, very well. You sure you got that straight? Yes, sir. <laughs> Time was on my side, I hoped. Emery back at the mission had said Daddy Bill wouldn't return for an hour, but I couldn't be sure. As quickly as I could, I spilled a half bottle of whiskey around the room in the hope it would give the effect old Mike was there. Then I pulled down all the shades and drew the drapes tight across the windows. I turned down the bed and mussed up the covers so it would be ready for me. My watch said I still had time to kill, so I ran upstairs to Mike's room on the fifth, then carrying a fifth. Well, bless my soul, Johnny. And look what you've brought me. On one condition, Mike. Oh, oh yes. Oh, anything you say. Oh, you've been so good to me. I want you to promise that no matter what happens, you'll stay right here in this room until I come back. Why, of course, Johnny. Of course, anything you say. <laughs> Especially now that you brought me this bottle of, to kind of keep me company. <laughs> say, wouldn't you like a little nip before you go? No, no, thanks. Oh, and keep this door locked. Oh, now you sure you wouldn't like just one little bit? No. Oh, I hate to think of me having it all alone when you probably need it as much as I do. Now. Oh, oh, say, Johnny. Yeah? When are you and I going to be able to take these awful-looking bandages off our heads? We'll talk about that later. i got to get back to my room. Yeah, now, you sure I can't tell I'm you sure. Now lock this door. All right, Johnny. But if you decide you want a little nip with me... Quickly and quietly, I went back downstairs to 203 and cautiously let myself in, leaving the door unlocked. Nobody been there. I'd made it in time. But now all I could do was wait. Yeah, Randy. Better make it fast. Oh, what's the matter? What'd you call about? That pretty little package you dropped off for the lab lads? Yeah. <laughs> you sure were right about it. A bomb, huh? If you or Mike had opened that package by now, you'd be spread all over the island in tiny little pieces. Look, Johnny, come on, let me in on it, huh? What are you up to down there? I'll tell you when it's all over. That is, if what I think is going to happen does happen. You sure you don't want some help? No, I think I can... Gotta go. I'd heard footsteps out in the hall. Quickly, I slid into the bed, leaving nothing but my heavily bandaged head showing. The footsteps passed. And then, far down the corridor, I heard a door open and close. I lay still and waited. And lying there, thinking, I began to wonder if I'd been right in turning down Randy's offer of help. Yet how could he help with them? Footsteps again. And this time, they stopped outside my door. voice was Daddy Bill's, and he wasn't alone. Mike? Mike? You want on the light? Mike? Oh, he's in here all right. Smell that booze? He's there on the bed asleep. You mean drunk? Close the door. Mm-hmm. Hey, you see him? Dead to the world. Are you sure this is going to be safe, Dutchie? Why do you suppose I took so long to case the joke? Yeah, but what about Dollar? I told you, Bill, at the Waldorf. You sure? You talked to him? No, no, he was in the coffee shop. Now, shut up, get this over with. Yes. Always we do the dirty work for you. All right, this one I'll do myself. Who's... Shut up. Johnny. Oh, Johnny. Wait a minute, that's Mike. Who's on that bed? Shut up. All right, Dollar. He can get up out of that bed and take it in the chest or lay there and get it in the back. All right, Cosgrave. Touchy. Both hands up high. Drop that gun. Sure. Johnny. 
Johnny. Shut him up out there, Bill. Yeah, Daddy Bill. Oh, quiet, Dollar. You'd better do something, Cosgrave. You, know, you have two witnesses. The man who always kept his skirts clean, huh? Quiet. Bill, let him in. We'll knock them both off. Make it look like a fight between them. Something. No, no, wait. Boss, we... Johnny, is something... I'm coming in. Oh, no, you get oh, back. Oh, Hey. Randy. Hey, you're real rough, aren't you? Now, wait a minute there, Mike. Get up off his chest. I want to see what your dear friend Daddy Bill looks like. Oh, What'd you hit him with, anyway? Oh, dear. The poor bottle's all broken. Best thing could happen to you, Mike. Oh. Ah. Well, this is Dutchy Gordon, alias J. Wesley Cosgrave. He won't be for long. What? Well, what's that, Daddy Bill? You feeling better? He always hung it on somebody else. Uh, what are you talking about? Lefty, shorty, all of them. This one he'd have hung on me. Well, not this time. That gun. Look out! Put it down! Randy, Cosgrave, dead as a doornail. And when Daddy Bill comes to after that sock on the chin, you can tell him he's cooked his own goose. My, 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 my. The world will be a bit better without Dutchie Gordon, alias J. Wesley Cosgrave. And of course, the courts will take care of Daddy Bill Larkin. Plenty. Mike? Indestructible Mike? Well, he'll probably outlive the rest of us. I hope I can get down to see him now and then talk over our great adventure together. Expense account total, $1,126.50, which is a lot less than the 50000 you might have had to pay off on, Mike. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week... The heady romance of moonlight on a lonely beach in Mexico. Moonlight from a killer's moon. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone who also wrote this story. Heard in this week's cast were Howard McNair, Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Herb Bygren, Alan Reed, and Roy Glenn. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>